Welcome to this short video about comma in Norwegian. Usually this is not a big issue. So um, this is more because I see some consistent mistakes uh, that it's so it can be worth going through. But usually comma is used much the same as in your native tongue. So of course we have in Norwegian we have a punctuation if you have a full pause. Then we have comma if you have a shorter pause, which is what we will talk about here. And in Norwegian, we tend to have more rigid rules, but not 100% rigid rules. It depends on context. The semicolon also have usage in Norwegian, but Norwegian generally don't use it. So if you tend to use it like something in, in between punctuation and comma in your native tongue, I think uh, it's best just to generally uh, avoid it when you're learning Norwegian and using Norwegian. But if we take the comma, so many of the rule, the same as in your native tongue. So I will just go very quickly and particularly focus on the one, one of the slides where I'm talking about how we do not use it in Norwegian because that's where generally there's a mistake. But if first, um, the first rule is if you have two complete phrases, generally then connected between og, eller, man, for. Yeah, this in the basic Norwegian books, we tend to focus on og, eller, man, not so much about for because it has different usages and can therefore can be kind of confusing. But it is what Norwegian school children learn, comma, in front of og, eller, man, for. But of course, only if it's a complete phrase. So, i dag rest vi på fjellet, og i morgen skal vi stå på ski. Complete new phrase with time expression, noun, verb, etc. And there is no verb. In the verb inversion is because for the time expression, there is no verb inversion in the new complete phrase. Jeg skal enten fortelle det i morgen, eller vi kan holde det i hemmelig. Again, new complete phrase with the noun, verb, etc. Erik liker fisk, men Hans liker kjøtt. Men, eh, but, always have a comma. So it, it, yeah, so that's easier to remember. Eh, Jeg tror han ikke kommer i dag, for været er veldig dårlig. See my video between difference between for and for the. So here it's how you would use for in a new complete phrase. So you see the weather is bad. So therefore you assume he's not coming today. So that is um, rule one, quite straightforward. Rule two, you probably seen in a two level where um, if a subordinate clause is first, then you have comma. If it is uh, after, then you generally don't have comma. Uh, so, da jeg var barn, reiste jeg ofte til Spania. You start with da, you see it's a subordinate clause. So, after this one, you have comma, verb inversion, etc. Hvis vi ikke drar snart, hvis, okay, indication, subordinate clause, comma, verb inversion. If it's at the end, it usually don't have comma in front of it. Uh, I will show some examples where this is not true in the end of this video, but generally, if you just think of it, if you see the same phrases here, if you say the same phrase, just change uh, order of the phrases. Jeg reiste ofte til Spania, da jeg var barn. No comma, because the subordinate clause is at the end. Vi kommer for sent til møte hvis vi ikke drar snart. Subordinate clause, it's at the end. So, no comma. The third rule, which is also just like in your own native tongue, if you add information that's not needed for the phrase, then you have comma before and after. For example, Bill Min, som er ny, ble stålet i går. You could say, Bill and Min ble stålet i går. This Som ny, which is new, it's just kind of like added information. You have comma before and after. Vi köpte akkurat et nytt hus, det gule bak skolen, og vi skal flytte inn snart. Vi just bought a new house, the yellow behind the school, just added information, and we are moving in soon. So, just like in your native tongue, added information not needed, then we use comma. Again, also comma rule that is uh, from your same as in your own native tongue. 
Then we use comma for all of them except the last one. Vi skal jobbe både 12., 13., 16. og 17. april. Comma, if you have a uh, several elements, comma between the first ones except the last two. Then you use og without the comma. De tog med seg kniver, gafler, kopper og vin til festen. Again, if you have a, a sequence of the, uh, elements, comma between each of them except the last two, we we'll use og. Here is uh, the one I was talking about, but it's generally, it's or is also the reason for actually making this video. This is because I often see overly use of comma in Norwegian. In Norwegian, we tend to, just like in English also, we, we tend to try to not have too long phrases. So if you're from a Latin language speaking country, try to keep two and a half lines in a regular text maximum without uh, a punctuation. We try to not keep long phrases just with comma. And also, so in Norwegian, in essays, for example, jeg liker å. It's much better to just say, for example, lika jeg å. We don't use so much this very short in the beginning of a phrase, and then comma, and then. Notice also the verb inversion. For the first, we have said that, so when you write an essay firstly, secondly, etc., try to avoid this comma just for the first half we set. We don't say it with a pause, we just say it for the first half we set at no pause in between, just a verb inversion. And this, uh, of, this is better. Uh, in this one, with time expression um sommaren, in the summer, i dag, uh, etc., and then comma, this is uh, v sounds very bad in Norwegian. So um sommaren, vi reiser. Do not use this. Um sommaren, reiser vi. Same with i dag, comma, do not use that. Um kvelden, comma, do not use that. So, short, this kind of time or moments expression in the beginning of the phrase, do not use comma, just use without the comma. So, that was uh, the main part. Here is some exceptions if you have interest, for, because you, sometimes you will see comma in, where it doesn't quite follow the rules. Here is the main once, but it's not a very, not that important for you to learn, particularly not if you're at basic level. But um, we do use comma in front of subordinate clause. That not, it's not completely necessary. Uh, or sometimes it can also change the meaning. So, I skal selge bilen i morgen, slik at han har penger til båten. Uh, he will sell the car tomorrow so that he has money for the boat. So the focus changes slightly if you say han skal selge bilen i morgen, slik at han har penger til båten. If you remove the comma, he will sell the car tomorrow so that he has money for the boat. It changes the focus slightly. So you can use it for just emphasize on one element. There is also some examples where you would use comma in Norwegian where uh, it would could change the meaning if you have comma or not. For instance, uh, Mora ble sint på sønnen som bråket veldig mye. If you remove the comma, Mora ble sint på sønnen som bråket veldig mye, then it changes the meaning. For instance, uh, in the first case, uh, she was angry at her son who made a lot of noise. Here it then it sounds like she only had one son and the last element is just adding information. If you remove the comma, she was angry at the son who's, who made a lot of noise. Then she was angry at the son who made a lot of noise, but not the other sons, if she had other sons. So, this could might, might be clearer if you say, Læreren ble sint på studentene som bråket. Ja. 
So here with the teacher, sorry about it, uh, my writing, it's not very pretty, but the teacher was angry at the students who made a noise, who made, uh, was noisy. So he was angry at all of the students because they were noisy. If you remove the comma, then he was angry at the student who, who was noisy, but not the other students. The other comma uh, with expression words, huff for et var, ja, han kommer i morgen, ja takk, jeg vil gjerne ha en til. Det kan du ikke gjøre. Tulling, tulling is buffoon or idiot. In, in front of, there is some certain short words like this, then you have the comma. That's why you also will say, see people, uh, for instance, in the beginning of email say, hey, comma, and then your name. I don't personally use it, but some would say that actually how you would use it in the beginning of a phrase, because you have a this kind of tiltale ur, I don't know the English word for it, in the beginning. Okay, I hope this was helpful, particularly remember the part that we do not use comma so much after very short words in the beginning of phrase. We tend to follow more strict rules, and like in English, try to keep the phrases two and a half line maximum. Try to put punctuations uh, or final stop where you can. Okay, thank you and see you in the next video.